In this part, we want to explore the concept of values. Let's remember that values are part of the processes of psychological flexibility, meaning being aware and identifying our values and aligning our behaviors in line with those values. In Education for Sustainable Development, values also play an important role. Often, uh, Education for Sustainable Development is um, described as reorienting education and learning so that everyone has the opportunity to acquire the knowledge, skills, values, and attitudes that empower them to contribute to a sustainable future. And so also for us as educators, we have to ask how can we do this? How do we teach students about what to value? What could it mean to give students the opportunity to acquire the right values? To explore this, we need to first, again, look at actually what do we even understand by values in this context. And in the contextual behavioral sciences that we already introduced, values clarification is really considered to be an important aspect of well-being and mental health. And part of values clarification involves understanding what the concept of value is and what it is not. And so in this lesson, we will explore the concept through a range of reflection questions and activities and so at the end, you and also your students should have a deeper understanding of what values are, how we can learn to identify our own values, and how values relate to well-being and sustainability. Here you can also explore the full lesson plan um, of this kind of lesson. So what is a value? Just as a note here, we're not interested in the concept of value from a materialistic or economic perspective, but rather really human value is non-materialistically. Non what do you think at this point? How would you define values? What characterizes values? And what do you think are some examples of values or non-examples of values? Just collect some of your initial ideas to these questions. Now, one way to help us think more clearly about our understanding of a concept is to try to differentiate it from other more or less related concepts. And in this case here, we're going to try to find the difference between values and goals. What might be some differences? Are values and goals the same thing? Why do you think so or why not? And if not, how might values be conceptualized different, differently from goals? Again, you can just think about your initial ideas to these questions. In this activity, we can further explore these differences. Try to sort the following examples into what you think are values and goals. And after you have done this, you can think again about what do you think makes something a value based on the examples for values that you have found and what makes something a goal. Again, you might want to pause the video to collect your ideas based on the examples. Maybe you can also try to find your own examples of values versus goals. Here are some ways to summarize the differences. Values are more like a compass showing us the direction of true north, versus goals are more like concrete destinations on this journey. And so in this way, Values are never really achieved or reached. It's never really done. Just like we can never really achieve West, we can always just move towards West anytime. Versus goals can really be something that can be achieved and ticked off. We can get to Berlin, but we can never really get to West. Values also make something, our actions and experiences, meaningful and worthwhile by themselves. Versus when it comes to goals, the things we do are really only a means to achieve a goal and we're more or less satisfied for a moment when we actually reach the goal. With values, we can also always choose to act in accordance with values. They are always available regardless of circumstance. Whereas with goals, well, sometimes we might not reach certain goals through whatever circumstances that are 
of an outside our control. Here's another way to help us think about the relation of values and, and goals. Let's say you have a value like taking care of my health. Then we can ask questions such as how can I live and work towards this value in a certain time period like this month, this week or right now? What specifically could I do? So this question helps us identify some short term goals such as maybe trying to eat a more healthy diet this year, eating fruits and vegetables daily this week or making a salad right now. And the other way around, if we have certain goals um, that we want to do in a certain time period, we can also ask, why do we actually care? Why are we doing this? Why is this important to me? To help us identify higher level goals and values. Here's another kind of question to help us think th further about the concept of values. Are values mostly about being happy or feeling good or having fun? Why do you think so or why not? And if not, how are values different from these? Here's again a sorting activity that, ca that can help us understand the difference between valued living and simply having fun or feeling good. It's a kind of quadrant where we can sort experiences based on how much fun they are or how painful they are and based on how pointless they kind of seem and versus how meaningful they are. This is an activity adapted from the book by Lauren Porosov and Jonathan Weinstein in their book Two for One Teaching. So we can sort a number of different activities and experiences into these quadrants. For example, here's a list of different activities that you could try to sort or you can also think of other activities from your everyday life to sort into each of the quadrants. And through such an activity, we can find out what we actually find meaningful in life, even if it might be painful. Um, and also what we kind of just find fun, whether or not, not it's meaningful. If we do this in groups, there will also be we, that we will find there are similarities and differences between people and how they interpret the same experience. And also we individually might interpret the same experience in different ways at different times. This can also help us to recognize what we have in common with other people and also what different motivations and values each individual has. Here's an example of eighth grade students sorting different school subjects where each color was by a different student. But these kind of things can also be done in a more fine grained way. So for example, by unit or for the week or a certain class or a project and so on, where we can ask students to sort various experiences at school and then reflect on why was it meaningful or why was it painful and so on. One way to also talk about the difference is that we're using words like when it's fun, we talk about wanting to do something simply because it's fun versus when it, it's meaningful, we can say that we are willing to do it because it's important, but not necessarily fun. Now looking at sustainability education, we still haven't really talked about how can we really help students acquire the values that empower them to contribute to a sustainable future. So this is again a question for us as teachers. How do we do this? How do we teach students about what to value and what could be what could it mean to give students the opportunity to acquire values? Think about how you would answer this question based on your experience and other ideas. Well, an important um, aspect of the idea of values is that they are always freely chosen qualities of action. That means we need to emphasize to students when choosing or identifying their own values that it's not about what they think they should value, uh, what society tells them to value or grown-ups. Really values are kind of wrong if they're not truly yours. But that doesn't mean, of course, that other people can't influence us in finding out our values. Nonetheless, the idea is here that we can't force values on anybody. They have to be freely, intrinsically chosen by people. 
And there are no different ways how we can help students identify freely their own values. In fact, several studies found that um, letting students reflect on what they value or on how classroom content is important to their lives increases performance outcomes and dropout rates and many other important um, outcomes. Also, studies find that there are higher benefits for more disadvantaged student groups, such as girls or students from low-income classes, students with generally low ex expectations or minor minorities that might be exposed to negative stereotypes that might negatively impact um, yeah, their attitudes. One study also found that uh, identifying values and goals was more effective than merely identifying goals alone, which again ties to what we did before, distinguishing between values and goals and how they are different but also related. And the interventions can be often very short. For example, students sort a range of values by personal importance or they write some reflections on important values or on how the lesson content connects to their lives. In the following slides, there are just some sum summaries of some of those studies that you can um, go to if you want to have a closer look at them to give you some idea about what kind of um, interventions you can do in a simple way in your own teaching. But so sorting tasks are simply that students choose a limited number of most important or least important values from a list, or they can create also their own ones, but often it's about a list between 30 to 40 different values that we can give them that they can sort and most important values should be usually no more than three to five to really make them think and, and prioritize. And such activities can also help to identify common values in a group, which relates to the core design principle one for cooperation that we looked at. And it also helps us to take other people's perspective, take into account what is important to them. And then once students have kind of identified a list of core values, we can also ask them to reflect more deeply or discuss with peers on these chosen values. And there's a number diff of different reflection questions we can ask them, so for example, to describe a particular situation when this value showed itself in their behaviors, maybe last week or last year. How did they live in line or towards this value last week? And so on or describing a person that they admire and that, that embodies this value to them. So there are different kinds of questions we can ask so that we get students, encourage students to re re really reflect on how this value connects to their own behaviors and experiences. Another interesting aspect to help us better think about the concept of values is to look at so-called values domains. These are just kind of groups of values in some sense that also have been identified by several psychologists that represent the kinds of things that are important to most human beings, most people, and that are also important for human well-being. They include um, connecting with others, with family, friends, also romantic partners, um, our need to give to others and have a positive influence on our communities, being active, sports, dancing, going for a walk, embracing the moment, challenging ourselves and learning, and simply caring for ourselves, our health and well-being. And so with these domains, it can also be interesting to really think about um, the fact that even though we have to each individually identify our own values, um, we do, as humans, often share a number of values, and these values domains can help us think about this because we share an evolutionary history, and so these kinds of values often also relate to what has been important for our survival and well-being in the past. For example, you can think about why might we, we humans care about these things or find them important and worthwhile still today. Why might doing these things have been important for the survival and well-being of our ancestors? Also, what are some example activities for each of these domains that we kind of tend to do in our lives today? 
here's an sorting activity that helps students think about these questions and also um, sort some example answers into the right, sort them with the right kinds of values domains. Also, psychologists sometimes differentiate different life domains to help us think about to what degree are we living towards or in line with our values in each of these different life areas, from family relationships to work and career and our own physical and mental health, for example. So in each of these areas, we can look at how are we doing in terms of valued living. In a more shorter format, there's also this kind of so-called bullseye values exercise where we can regularly identify or, or evaluate how we are living in line with our values in several areas of life. Another question that might be interesting to reflect on is the idea whether values change throughout our life. Or the question, are we kind of born with our values? Are they more set in stone and they're never changing as we develop? Or can the things that we find important and meaningful change through our lives? And if so, how? Again, you can think about how you would answer these questions. And so the thing is, actually values can and do change throughout life. This also ties to the importance of developing a kind of flexible self-view, also sometimes the idea of self as a process or a context rather than as a rigid concept that never changes. And so to help students understand the idea that we're not the same as we were 10 years ago and we will also probably be different 10 years from now. So there's this role of changing experiences, learning and discovery that we can also use to discover maybe new values throughout our lives. So a reflection question such as, how have your values changed over time and why? Maybe throughout the school year, or was there someone in your life who influenced what you value today? And what values do you think you'll have in 10 years? can all guide students to be more open towards new experiences and changing um, what they might value in life. So to summarize, we can come back to our conceptualization of what a value is and, so, and refine our understanding based of what we just learned. So how would you define values in your own words now? what characterizes values, and what are some examples of values. Here's a summary of what we just looked at. So values are different from goals because they are never achieved or done, but they are intrinsic qualities or directions for everything we do in any moment. Values are also different from feeling good because doing something we value is not always fun. It can involve painful or uncomfortable experiences. And so, in terms of language, we can make a difference between wanting to do something and being willing to do something. Values are also freely chosen. Every one of us has to discover and freely choose for themselves what is important to them. No one can really tell us what we should value, but people can help us discover our own values because of new experiences and learning. And value priorities can also change throughout life, for example, through experience, such that different activities can become rewarding and meaningful. If you are interested, here are some more formal possible definitions that summarize some of the points that we looked at. Values are freely chosen qualities of one's everyday actions that we can consciously choose and name and that make these actions intrinsically meaningful. Here are some books that we recommend about these topics. So Lauren Porosov and Jonathan Weinstein's book, Two for One Teaching, contains many different activities that can help you in, as in your classroom connect different content and themes of your curriculum to student values. Another interesting theme you can explore related to the concept of values is the so-called World Value Survey. This is a regular survey that's been done for a number of decades now where scientists ask people from across 
about 80 countries covering really all the regions of the world about the things that they value on a number of dimensions. And scientists find here the influence of culture, including cultural history, religion, economic prosperity and socioeconomic security, and age on really patterns of how people respond to certain kinds of um, values. A quote from the book Freedom Rising, which is about this World Value Survey, says that fading existential pressures open people's minds, making them prioritize freedom over security, autonomy over authority, diversity over uniformity, and creativity over discipline. The existentially relieved state of mind is the source of tolerance and solidarity beyond one's in-group. The existentially stressed state of mind is the source of discrimination and hostility against outgroups. You can reflect a little bit on what do you think about this quote. Do you agree with it or not? And how does it relate to your own experience or to events in society? And what might it mean for sustainable development? Mm -hmm.